Okay, so in this video, we're going to review the tra trading terminal and all the widgets around it. The first widget we're going to start with is the account widget. The account widget, as you might be familiar uh, with your trading terminal that you're using right now, your live one, uh, it's pretty, it should be pretty familiar, pretty similar. So what we have here is the first one is the account balance. Is how much money do I have in my account? Buying power is how much, uh, well, of course, the buying power. A PNL on the day is how much money I have made or lost during for this specific date and time. And the unrealized PNL is how much money I'm, I'm making on my open positions. Okay, so that should be fairly straightforward. As I'm open positions while I'm trading, I'm gonna see these numbers moving. Okay. Next thing we're gonna review is how to edit our account balance. To edit the account balance, I need to click on the gear icon. Click on the gear icon, and then here I can select my account balance. Or I can set it to whatever I want. So let's suppose that perhaps I don't I don't want to trade with twenty five hundred. I want to trade with a uh, five thousand because realistically that's what I'm gonna go uh, to the live trade with. Okay, so I want to say five thousand, and let's say our a uh, broker is giving us a margin account, which is giving us a leverage of two. Okay. So automatically, the system is going to um, change your account balance to reflect such, and it's going to automatically also change your buying power. Okay, so fairly easy. Up next, let's review the widget, uh, the screener widget. Okay, so the screener widget is should be similar to what you're used to in your live broker. It uh, basically allows you to scan uh, the entire stock universe for a specific um, for a specific criteria that you might set. Okay, so how do we create a new screener? So, for example, here I have a screener that I call Gap Up, but I'm gonna create a new one. So I can click on this um, on this sub menu. This is gonna bring me a sub menu. It's gonna I can see here the the scanners that I have created. And then I'm going to have these two options. Do I want to edit the current screener that I have or do I want to create a new one? So I'm going to create a new one. Okay. I'm going to call this screener um, a gap down or whatever you want to call it. Let's, let's just say new one. Okay. Oops. New one. So let's say for me specifically in my case i want to trade stocks between one and uh seven dollars in price and that have potentially changed between uh, 10 percent and up current vol volume is a uh, of course what's the volume that you you want um you want to scan them for so it's going to trigger the scanners once it has for example in my case uh, i think i do it with a uh, 500 in volume Less than that is probably not liquid, and the number of trades is, um, well, how many trades have been placed by that given time. So I'm gonna put 2,000, which is also is a representation of liquidity. Okay, I click on save. I'm gonna see my uh, this new uh, scanner that I have here created, a new screener. Okay, then I go back to my train terminal, and I can use that screener. So for example, here I'm gonna select the new one, which is this one. All right, so in, in order for my results to start showing up, I have to click on play. So if this is not playing, the results are not gonna show up. Now this is gonna take maybe a couple of seconds. Oh, that was pretty fast. Um, to scan through the universe and to start telling me, okay, which stocks are meeting my criteria. Pretty easy. Let's say that for any reason, I wanna edit this. Uh, I don't wanna uh, be looking at stocks that are $1. I wanted something, let's say between five and seven. Well, I could do that. I could click on Edit Screener. All right. And then here I can click on Edit once again. And then I can say, okay, well, it wasn't one. I want to scan it between five and let's say $10. $10. Okay. Click on Save. Go back to my trading terminal. Click on Play. And then I just have to wait a couple of seconds for this screener to start telling me which stocks uh, are um under this criteria okay next we're gonna be reviewing the watch list 
Uh, hopefully this is very familiar again to you, how it works for your uh, current broker or training application. So all you need to do here to, let's say if I wanna add this one right here that I find, let's say interesting, I wanna add it to my watch list. I click on here where it says um, add symbol. I click here and then I start typing the symbol that I want to be adding. So in this case it's comp. So here I am adding this one and it should be added here. So just be care just keep in mind that then you might have to scroll here up and down to find uh, what you just added and then you can reorganize uh, this widget uh, which end column that you might find interesting with. So I personally uh, do a by percent change, okay? There we go. So if for any reason I want to delete one of the items that I just added here, I can just hover over the area here over the ticker symbol and then I want to see this X right here. I click on that X and that's going to remove the ticker symbol from the watch list. Okay. Next, we're going to be reviewing the key stats widget. Okay. Fairly simple. We're going to only show you here in the key stats a, a items that we consider interesting and that a trader should be looking at. Uh, we're going to be hopefully, uh, we hope to constantly be adding key, key stats or metrics here that we consider or that a uh, that traders are requesting to us. So for right now, we have the open, the close, the high, the low, that's a high of day, of course. Uh, we have the current volume, we have the previous close, and um, all the interesting metrics. Fairly simple and straightforward. Next, we have the order widget, which allows you to uh, see the orders that you have placed, okay? and you're able to select or filter by it if you want to see only fill orders or if you want to see only working orders, which is the orders that are pending or cancel or all okay easy next we're going to be reviewing the position widget okay the position widget in order to view that one i'm going to minimize this one so we can view it in full i'm going to place an order for um something that is moving let me see uh, it's going to be unrealistic, but it's something for us to get the idea. I'm just going to play an order for 10,000 uh, shares for Tesla. Okay, so um, it's got to wait a little bit here for the order to get filled. Uh, it's not getting filled, so I'm just going to accelerate this. Oh, there you go. It's already filled. So, um, okay, the position is telling us the ticker symbol. The um, the price I traded this at the price I, the average I go fill at the last price of course the quantity and the unrealized PNL so it's looking good I'm making some money here now something that I want to show you here something that um that you don't want to see in any software up to we haven't seen uh, is the following so you can click on the position and here we encourage you to enter key statistics about this position. I mean, why did you enter into this position? What was your setup? What was your strategy? Tell me. So the system is asking you for that. Okay, let's say this was a bull flag setup. Perfect. Now, is there any notes that you want to add? In my case, I'm going to add something here. All right, so I'm just going to say something like Elon sent a tweet about our new, uh, new acquisition. So that's why I entered into the trade. So just explain whatever is the reason why you enter into the trade. And if you happen to make a mistake, um, tag it here. For example, if you chase these stocks, tag it. Now, you just have to click here on save. And those notes, those tags that you just added, is going to be automatically associated to that position. Now, the beauty of this is that um, this is going to be automatically synced with your TraderSync journal. So now you can go uh, to your TradingSync journal and you're going to be able to see that you took that position and you're going to be able to see those notes that you put around it. The idea is that we, be, we start building statistics about your trading habits, your trading patterns. And with that, uh, by digging into TradingSync, the journal, you're going to be able to find patterns, patterns that are profitable or patterns that are showing that uh, you're clearly making mistake in some cases. So anything that gives you an idea about how to improve, basically, okay? So that's position. I'm just gonna exit the position widget here by um, selling. Right next, we're gonna be reviewing level two, which you should be familiar. 
level two is as the widget reads it's a level two data we show the best bit and quote per change at a given time again you should know that already from your broker pretty straightforward if you don't want to see it for some reason you can either minimize it or you can close it right so that should cover all the widgets that we have available currently in the application now let's review a couple of other items that uh, you can take advantage of to make this application really yours to 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 treat to your style okay so uh, perhaps let's say you don't need a level two so what do you do in that case uh, if you don't want to see level two so you can simply either minimize this or you can close the widget okay in my case i'm going to close the widget now that i have closed it i'm able to reposition um, the widgets that i have left in a way that that are better for myself for example you don't want to see place order here you normally have place order to the right so you just drag and drop that to the right and then there you're going to have it so in my case it's just put in here to the left because i still have um, another widget here that i should uh, be dragging and dropping here there we go so i just have to play with this and uh, say okay well i want this one here i want orders here and position here ho however you like okay so an another way to do this is that let's say for example i don't want to see orders there i don't i don't normally look at that so um, you could click on this gear icon right here which is going to tell you all the widgets that we have avail available and they're going to be able to turn it on and off so right now this is on i'm going to turn it off by clicking on this and then there we go so the system tries to adapt the layout or this redistribute the um, the widgets as it thinks is best but you can always a uh, a uh, select them and drag them back to whichever position you think is best all right so that should be fairly easy and also something that i didn't mention but you could drag and drop these widgets from the left to the bottom okay or any widget from the bottom to the left here okay so for any reason let's say i don't want to see these uh bottom a uh, call um bottom space here okay so you could click here on this gear icon and then you can activate a specific column so for example if you want to activate a column to the right you can activate a column to the right which allows you to place widgets on that column and for any reason you don't want to see this column on the bottom so you just uncheck that and there we go so now i'm able to place widgets on the left and widgets on the right and i'm going to be able to see my chart right in the middle but again let's just say i truly only want to have one column Perfect, no problem. I click on the gear icon, deselect the right column, now I have everything on my left column. But it's looking a bit tight, so that's why I have to uh, either start minimizing some of the widgets or I can start turning them off. All right, so for the purpose of this uh, demo, I'm just gonna put my layout back to how it was. I'm gonna reactivate the bottom uh, column and now I can start placing my layout how it was before, which is actually how I like it to be. So here I'm missing the order widget. I probably turn it off. I'm gonna have to turn it on by clicking on the gear icon. I wanna click on level two. Yes, I want level two and yes, I want orders, okay? So I can start redistributing this. So how did I had it before? I'm gonna start dragging and dropping this thing until I have it in the exact same position that I want it. So key stats, I want it somewhere here. Uh, level two, I want it right here. Uh, orders, which is hiding right here below. I'm just gonna make it not too high and then I put it right here and key stats is now closed it's minimized um, and then I do not want it minimized so I click on this one I click on this one to maximize the window and there we go okay next uh, let's review how to enable and disable pre and post market okay on the timeline so on the timeline the timeline starts at 9 30 and it ends at uh, 4 but if I want to be able for any reason to see or to be able to position myself on pre-market or post-market, I just have to click on the gear icon right here. And then after I click on that gear icon, I can see here that says view pre and post-market price action. I just have to toggle this to on. All right. And now the um, timeline is going to start from 4.30 a.m. and it's going to end at uh, 20. Okay. So I can position myself at 4 a.m. and 
perhaps trade the pre-market if that's what I wish to do. If you don't want to see that, uh, again, you can just toggle that off by um, clicking on the gear icon and then clicking on the pre and post price action to toggle that off. Next, let's review the quick action uh, buttons that we have here on the top. So on the top, what do we have? We have a like button and we have a, a adding to a playlist button. So if I click on the like button, uh, the system is going to automatically uh, place this chart that I'm viewing at um, in my like uh, playlist. So for example, I'm going to click on Tesla. Tesla on May 27, I'm going to click on like, and this is going to be added to my playlist, which I then can refer back to um, the playlist that I have for like uh, charts, and then I can review this chart later on. But if you want to be a little more um, specific, well, uh, you can you can you can place it on the like playlist, or you can place it on a specific playlist. So a playlist is a collection of charts. So if I click on here, you're gonna see the playlists that I have already created. So the way how we encourage users to use playlists is that uh, each playlist should should be uh, should be formed by charts that have a specific strategy that you're trading. For example, in, in my case, that's how I'm using it. So for example, here, I'm trading this uh, as a red to green. So I see in this chart that it, this is a red to green setup. And um, I don't want to forget about this chart. I want to perhaps practice on this chart later on. So I can just simply click on this playlist. And the system, as you can see here below, it's going to save that chart to that playlist. So that means a month from now, I can go back to that specific playlist, the red to green, and they and I can refer back to I can refer back to this specific Tesla chart, and I can retrade that if I want to. Okay, so it's saving that chart there forever. Okay, 